So there's tons of really awesome farming methods in Ghost of Tsushima that you're definitely going to want to use if you want to get almost unlimited supplies and resources as well as fully upgrade all of your gear. And in this video I want to go over all of the best methods, some of which you can do very early on in the game while others are more towards the end, some of which even after finishing the main story. So if you enjoyed this video a thumbs up on it would be super awesome and let's jump right into it. Let's begin with a couple of items that you should definitely use if you want to make the most out of your farming sessions and these are the traveler's outfit hopefully fully upgraded as well as the charm of Inari, both of which you actually get very early on in the game as long as you keep your eyes open. The cool thing about these items is that they kind of let you shoot multiple birds with just one stone. Like for example the traveler's outfit is amazing and not just clearing out more fog of war but it also alerts you of close by artifacts that by the way you will find a ton of in the locations that I'm about to show you in this video anyway. The second one Charm of Inari is just amazing at providing additional resources like supplies, hides, bamboo and you wood when collecting them to the point that you might even get more than double the initial amount that you've collected. Now some of the earliest and best farming methods in the game are of course those large enemy camps. You can also see them by their distinctive icons. There's two of them in the beginning area or the first map in Act 1 which are the logging camp to the south and the shipyard to the west. Of course the shipyard is much closer but you can also go in and take the logging camp if you have destroyed that one. Which also brings me to the first tip and that is do not use the explosives cart in any of these big enemy camps. Otherwise they are going to get completely destroyed and this includes all of the goodies inside of them. Now if you somehow manage to destroy the shipyard for example in the beginning of the game then don't worry there's going to be a ton of alternatives in this video that I'm going to show you. Including the first one which was the logging camp to the south of the island that I randomly stumbled upon in my first playthrough. And just like in the case of any large enemy camp this is going to provide you a ton of resources but best of all three chests for a ton of supplies that by the way can be resetted every single time. So the best way to reset these is to find a very close travel point that you can teleport to that will also reset these chests. In the case of the logging camp it's the fox den just outside of the camp to the southwest of its entrance. And from here on it's really easy. If you cleared up all of the enemies the camp should be free to loot and you're going to find one of the first chests in one of these tents on the left side just as you entered the camp. From here on get out of the tent and you're going to see a bunch of stairs that lead up to the upper section where there's also like the big camp area where the main boss was into. But you're going to have to actually pass his tent and lead into the second one in the same level that is going to hold the second chest. The third one is going to be just across all of these so just jump on the other side up until you see this tent next to this formation of rocks and inside of it there's going to be the third one that you can collect. And repeat this process over and over again just teleport back to that fox den and do this as many times as you want to. Of course there's many others in the rest of the game but I'm not going to spoil anything. When you see them you will know them so just try not to destroy them and keep them for later farming. Now if you somehow did destroy many of these and like there's nothing left for you then don't worry we still have plenty more to go. Many of which are actually even better than some of these that I just told you. This brings us to the smaller enemy outposts that have a great advantage over the larger bases which is the fact that they don't get destroyed if you fully liberate them. In fact you only get to kill the enemies but the chest inside and all of the other goodies are still there. The only downside is that there's only like one per each of these smaller camps but we're gonna make this way more interesting and way faster even than the larger ones. So let's get started with the fact that in Act 2 you're going to see that a ton of these enemy outposts are going to pop up all over the map and by the end of the game once you finish it you're going to see that all of these enemy outposts are going to be finally revealed which makes them easy to discover. So basically what you're going to want to do is to travel between these ones, liberate them and you're going to have in most of them at least one chest that you can unlock. Most of the time those chests are either inside of these enemy tents, right by a fence, sometimes even in the middle of like the camp and whatnot or inside of the buildings. For example there are a ton of really awesome enemy outposts towards the south part of the island that I really enjoy traveling between. These are the tangled crossroads, we also have like the salt wind estate, um, the stone arch crossing and there's also like the beachside camp but there's others in there as well like the rushing water crossing that I'm constantly using to travel between and getting all of the chests inside of them. And the cool part about these is that they also give you like extra rewards especially 
especially since they also spawn other types of random events. One such example is the rushing water crossing and what I found out is that most of the camps that are really close to main roads, like this one right here, also have a high chance to also spawn enemy patrols because these patrols will also pass through these camps even after you have already liberated them and killed all of enemies inside of them. So not only can you take the initial resources on the ground, the chests on them, but also those enemy patrols that will provide additional supplies. And by the end of the game it's going to be super easy to clear like multiple of these very very fast. But there's also the ones like Tangled Crossroads towards the south of the island and what I found out about these is that if they are close to woods and forests there's also a high chance to spawn enemy bear attacks. And it's definitely going to be useful. There sometimes can be even multiple bears attacking which means it's really easy to get predator hides that you will use as a trapper to further upgrade all of your throwables. And this is basically what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to liberate several of these outposts that are closer to one another and once you have done that they become travel points, case in which you can quickly fast travel between one another, quickly collect all of those resources including the chests and then repeat this over and over again until you basically get thousands and thousands of materials and supplies. Which brings us to the next portion of this guide which truly makes this almost unlimited. And that is of course by selling all of your arrows as well as the black powder bombs to any local trapper for a nice profit. The more you sell, the more supplies will get back and of course for this you will have to upgrade all of the arrows and bomb capacities to the maximum amount so that you can carry more of them so that you can further sell more of them at the trapper. So basically you're visiting all of these outposts anyway, they contain a ton of these resources and chests anyway, but you're also going to see a ton of these arrow stands all around these camps, so just go ahead, collect everything up until your inventory is filled with arrows and the black powder bombs, and every like couple of camps at most, you can go back at the trapper, sell these for a nice profit, at least 100 resources for every time you do it, and you can do this an infinite amount of times for an infinite amount of supplies. Again, supplies are super important in this game, it's basically what you're using in this, as a form of currency because not only are they useful at upgrading most of your gear but it's also very useful at buying other types of materials but more on that in just a little bit. Speaking of abundant resources this also brings us to the next one on the list which is a great one to sell for a ton of supplies at the scrapper and that is of course the iron. By the end of the game you're going to notice that you have hundreds of it in your inventory since the game basically showers you in all of that iron and even after like fully upgrading the katana and Tanto, you're likely still going to have hundreds of it just staying in your inventory and collecting dust. And since they don't really have much use outside of upgrading your weapons, this is the perfect fit for selling at your local scrapper. Over 100 stacks sell for over 1500 supplies, so it's actually a really good method to just get a ton of it, and that's basically one full armor set worth of supplies that you can get from just 100 stacks. The next one on the list is going to be those exotic materials, especially the silk and the gold. Now these are very useful because you're going to use them for the final upgrade for your weapons and your armors. Especially the armor sets will require 6 silk just for the final upgrade and you won't have too much of it at any given point since you don't get it as rewards from too many places. But there are a few things that you can do in order to get quite high amounts of it and the most straightforward and my best recommendation is to complete the side tales for Ishikawa, Masako, Yuno and Norio but I believe there's others in there as well. So basically almost every single one of these tales will reward you 2 silk for each of them completed and it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete these. And not just that, each of the characters has at least one of these in their chain sequences up until the maximum of 9 for Ishikawa and Masako so that's basically at least a couple of sets worth of silk just for the armors. Gold on the other hand is what you get from like taking down most of these bigger camps, you will even see it being listed under the reward description so um, it's kind of hard to miss you only also use it for the katana and the tanto so you don't really have to worry about not having enough of these like how it was with the silk but if you do there is a third alternative and that is of course buying them from various vendors one such vendor is the one at the jogaku temple in the north part of the map you're basically going to see him um, on the down part of these stairs right here that lead into the temple so instead of going in the temple area actually go downstairs and and on the left side right next to this frozen waterfall you will see the trapper over there and he both sells silk as well as gold but it does take a bit of time to replenish those resources. Just keep in mind that he only sells
costs one of each and they also cost about 300 supplies each so it can be quite costly and I'm not sure if it's the best method to actually get these but it is an alternative if you're missing like one or two pieces that it might be required for your next upgrade. Having said that these were the best methods that worked for me as you were able to see I had over 10,000 supplies and the only thing that I was kind of missing was a few silk here and there but this is it um, you can basically upgrade all of your gear this way and you can even do it early game to get prepared for when you finish it but thank you so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to comment like and subscribe it would be super awesome if you did that and I will see you guys in the next one